Hello everyone, Happy New Year. Here we are for the January 2015 shop tour. It is January 1st, about 11.20 p.m. as I record this. Um, and uh, there's much going on in the shop. Not nearly as far as ahead in the shop as I thought I'd be as of the December tour, but you know, say la vie. We're moving along. Um, as you can see, I'm focusing on here. This is the right hand side as you first walk in the shop where traditionally the bandsaw has always stood. There is my new Laguna 16 inch bandsaw. Um, unfortunately, if you look there, it's bladeless and that's how it stands. It, uh, it came in just after Thanksgiving and I've had non stop rush of projects in here. Uh, the bench I built for my dad for Christmas and now strewn across the table saw in the back and behind me is uh, my son's Cub Scout Packs Pinewood Derby track. Uh, they have an aluminum track that fits on plywood with wooden legs and stuff and I'm doing a complete overhaul of the track because it was falling apart. I'm saving the aluminum track, you can see they're stacked up on the table saw, and rebuilding all the wooden components. And that race is on January 24th and so I need to get this track done and out of my shop in time for the race and then I still need to bring the kids in here and we need, we need to make Pinewood Derby cars so um, unfortunately, well fortunately or not, the, my dad's bench and the Pinewood Derby track neither require a bandsaw so I simply haven't had the time to dedicate a day to putting a blade on it and getting it tuned and, and getting the saw commissioned essentially but uh, I'm very eager to do that, I have picked up a little bit of ducting to connect to the two dust ports, got one there on the side, got another one on the back I want to duck them together so that I can take the single hose off the cyclone over there and connect it to it. Um, so I, I remain very eager to do it, um, but uh, at least until I get through these deadlined projects, it's going to unfortunately stay there kind of uh, unused. Um, here in the corner is a pi piles of stuff that have to go up in the attic. That's the electric that kind of lives down here because I'm constantly wiring things. And you can't really tell, but that concrete block, I began to break it up and uh, I spent two evenings on it in mid-November, I think, and it uh, it got the better of me. It's quite a beast to break up. So you can see there I have a demolition hammer and my hammer drill and my masonry tools jammed up against the front of the table saw. So ultimately, I need to get back to work on that and, and remove that block. That'll clear up a lot of room for the bandsaw, but that's probably probably a project for for March by the time I get through my backlog of projects that are all waiting on people and deadlines and things. So, all that said, as we come along here, these are going to get cut to be 11 and 7 eighths inches long and then they're going to get put transversely across the width of the track every 11 inches and they'll lift the track up off the ground, provide enough clearance underneath it for the attachment hardware that attaches the four sections of track together and kind of stiffen it and, uh, and add a little bit of mass to it. So they're oak. They're a piece of oak that, if I had to guess, moved with me. I've been in this current house over six years and I have a very small selection of wood down the basement and it's all um, it's all S4S wood that I bought before I was in the shop, before I had a joiner, a planer and everything. Um, so it's some old, old oak. I took a probably a 1 by 6 by 10 and milled it up to everything you can see on that far back bench and a 1 by 4 and some other pieces that I milled this out of. And I'm assuming that it's going to be fairly dimensional, dimensionally stable and it's not doing anything in my shop so I might as well use it for the Pinewood Derby track. A um, little out of order but right there is some half inch Baltic birch plywood that is going to form the base of the track and then there you see the actual aluminum track. They're all stacked on each other. Um, so you come through here, there's my Festool dust extractor. Uh, what you'll see missing is I don't have my rigid uh, shop vac with the Clearview Cyclone built into it anymore. I gave that to my dad because uh, no complaint about it at all, but I've come to the point where I can't fit essentially three vacuums. I had this that I was always using as a, sh a dust extractor. I've got the new Cyclone that's up and running. Um, and then I had the Rigid that was sitting over there where the heater is now and used that as a shop vac. And um, what I did do is I kept 
my rigid hose and my rigid accessories because thankfully they plug right into the fest tool it makes it very easy and what I have back there is a simple five gallon bucket and the dust deputy that I've had forever and never bothered connecting so uh, again once I'm done with the Pinewood Derby track I'm going to connect the dust deputy to the bucket and connect that to the fest tool and this one really expensive dust extractor will serve the purposes of both a general purpose shop vac and a dust extractor and I think it's it's a good it's a good vacuum it can certainly handle it um, here against the wall so all these red cabinets and some open shelves and then all my festival stuff this is something that I've talked about changing and I'm going to change the plan as I have in my head right now is to clean out these cabinets and eliminate these four and then I can take the table saw and bring it back a little bit and let me go back to the table saw for a second this is the, I think it's the T2 fence I've used the Beesmeyer fences, I've used the T2 the Beesmeyer is a little bit beefier but I, I don't know I don't. I can't appreciate pay, upgrading for it if I didn't have a fence at all, a good fence at all I'd, I'd buy a Beesmeyer but um, the, delt, the base delta fence is a pretty good fence so that's the fence I have here and it's got a 32 inch capacity, I don't know if you can see that 32 inch capacity um, it sticks out more than halfway through the shop you can see see it here so I, I've come to the resolution I'm going to cut these rails so I can bring it tighter to the to the wall and that's something that in an old article I've talked about on the podcast an old article in fine woodworking Matthew Teague talked about doing that when he was in a one car garage shop so I think I'm probably going to go to maybe 25 inches something like that so I can go beyond 24 and then I can cut it here and that'll win me yeah, so that's going to win me like five maybe six inches something like that and and I can bring the saw over I've got a track saw off if I really need that capacity and you can see the way the boxes and stuff are I can't cut things that are that wide anyway so I don't think I'm giving up much I can't tell you the last time I tried to rip 24 inches on the table saw and I'll just win a bit more space but then to move back here um, I got tired of the coil in this Festool hose so I've got it weighted and I'm hoping it'll relax a little bit if I leave it like that for a while um, here are this is all going to be the leg assembly for the Pinewood Derby track that holds the back section up and in here is all the hardware um, I'll probably shoot a maybe not a video maybe just photos and a blog post but I'll, I'll mention what I'm doing these are from Lee Valley and they slide together lock it together and then I've got some window clasps that connect the whole thing I'm trying to make it uh, so you don't have to screw it all together every time you pull it out I want it all to be quick locking hardware <laughs> Think it, think it'll work out, but I'm still working on that. There's my actual Pinewood Derby car set. Uh, my tools for building Pinewood Derby cars. Um, just an assortment of specialized Pinewood Derby things in there. But that'll be the project as soon as this damn track is done. Um, I can't tell you the last time that bench was empty, but working on the Pinewood Derby, uh, I've needed the saw. So I finally cleared out the bench. Now I'm tripping over this massive joiner every single time. So um, I will be be working on getting that mobile soon. Um, I need to get rid of these projects that have deadlines. Anyway, um, so this is really all as it has been, but it's a little clean. The saw continues to wow me. Um, throw it off to 90, lock it in the quick lock, and it is dead, dead accurate. Um, I can't say enough good things about this saw. This is the Bosch Glide saw. Um, coming over here, let me push this back against the wall. I don't think the Cyclone was finished in the last shop tour. I meant to watch that tour and know for sure, but you know how things go. So there's the Cyclone, all set and done. That's the impeller and motor off of an old Dust Boy I bought on Craigslist. That's an Oneida Super Dust Deputy with the Rockler Dust Right expandable hose, I think it is. And then that's just a 30 gallon drum I bought off Amazon. And over here is a filter from Win Industries. And I'll give Win a big shout out. I was emailing back and forth with Dick Win about this and he gave me some good advice about the filter and 
told me how to hook up the bucket on the bottom to act as a catch and the bucket has a screw lid so I can screw that bucket off and um, and empty it. I don't think I'll have to do that very often. I've checked a couple times there's basically nothing in it but uh, there's the there's the dust dep uh, cyclone. I'm sorry I'm a little tongue-tied it's it's late. So if we move past that here's the planer and uh, and some wood storage. So that is where the shop stands. Um, this is January and uh, we're starting off another year of shop tours. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope your shops are moving along. And um, if you don't do your own tours, I would uh, encourage you to. Not just for sharing with the community, but it's kind of a good motivator to keep things moving along in the shop. I hate doing a tour where I say, oh that's the same as it was last time. Uh, I want things to be moving and putting an eye on it once a month and just documenting where it stands. It's a nice record and a nice motivator to keep things moving. So if you're looking to make some progress in your shop, I would recommend these tours. But regardless, just go out in the shop and make something. Make something good and enjoy.